Okay. Welcome, guys. This is another episode of Motivate OTs, uh, where we are sharing information on different uh, occupational therapy settings, uh, talking to different occupational therapists who are experts um, in their own settings. <clears throat> so today it's my pleasure to be joined by Tassara Jo. He is a senior occupational therapist uh, currently working in Ireland uh, within the setting of uh, adult community mental health. So today we're going to be discussing uh, with Tassara. Of course, he's going to be making lots of reference to the work that he's currently doing. But um, I would invite you, Tass, to introduce yourself, um, your, your career, how it has progressed to where it is now, and uh, the work that you're currently doing in uh, adult community mental health. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tongai, for having me here on your platform. Pleasure. Um, a great platform that I think um, when you started, I never thought to get to this stage. Um, very important for OT to be marketed um, on these platforms. Uh, basically, myself, I would say I qualified it uh, in West of Zimbabwe. Uh, after for qualification, I don't know if it was by chance. Um, I went to work at Inguichen Central Hospital in Blawayo in Zimbabwe. Uh, this is one of the major institutions for mental health services. And um, that kind of started my career because Inguichen Central Hospital is, is quite an OT focused and occupational therapy focused um, institution. Um, I'm not sure most of uh, my colleagues there realized that it was all OT, uh, but it is. So I got quite interested in uh, mental health at that point. Um, most of our clients were inpatient, uh, we were sort of admitted there, uh, but um, we worked quite hard to, to start community, uh, community services to help people you know, uh, progress from inpatient care to uh, community reintegration. So when I got an opportunity to come to Ireland, um, just so happened that the first job interview I got was for mental health as well, inpatient mental health. Uh, I moved to that post, uh, worked in that post uh, uh, for quite some time. Uh, and eventually in 2019, I moved to the current post where I'm working adult community mental health. So we work with people who are living at home, uh, whose life, whose occupational performance areas have been disrupted by uh, mental health difficulties. Uh, my role there is to complete assessments and um, provide interventions, provide supports uh, for them to get back to their functional level before disruption by mental health uh, difficulties. The service I work in, we have a small admission unit, an inpatient unit. So only for those people who need inpatient admission um, they go into uh, that admission unit and I would um, have an English service where I go there every week to assess and complete care plans for those who have been admitted. But the bulk of my work is um, in the community. Wow, that, that's great. Thank you so much. Um, so you, you, have, you have been, I mean, all the way you have been uh, in, in the area of mental health. Uh, yes, yeah. it's, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, I know it, it has been uh, your passion to be in this in this area. I remember back then. I think we did an was it an elective placement at Inguichen? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and it it was it was great, and we had sort of like uh, mentors who were really brilliant. I, I hope probably I'll, I'll invite one of them on one of these platforms so that they can share with us what what they are doing now. Yeah. So yes. Um, so for, for, for one to work as an occupational therapist mm -hmm. in the setting that you're working in, what, what mm -hmm. sort of OT are they supposed to be? What sort of attributes do you think uh, one needs to work in this setting? Well, um, <laughs> mental health in general, uh, it's, um, it's quite interesting uh, that 
is sort of the day-to-day um, difficulties that people experience in their lives. Uh, but the people we work with, obviously, say someone who has depression, um, we talk about clinical depression where they, you know, they can't function, in, you know, in their in their work, in their education, um, in completing household activities, in their personal care. So, for someone to for for you to be able to to support someone like that, um, you, you need to to have a sense of trying to understand someone's core values, where they're coming from. Um, it's an area where if you don't understand someone's values, someone's core values, um, the chances are you will struggle to provide them an effective intervention. And you as a professional, it might be difficult for you to continue to sustain it. Um, the second thing as well, I try to be very clinical. I try to be very objective in what I do. Uh, there's a risk of um, over generalizing things or over involved in people's lives mm -hmm. that you know, don't, do not necessarily need an OT intervention or any other intervention uh, per se. So I try to focus on what are the difficulties, what are the clinical issues, uh, not all the issues, uh, because remember Tongai, we, we did psychosocial OT. Yeah. Uh, if, if you look at psychosocial OT, you, you can, I can assess you now and come up with some issues that we have uh, <laughs> and then start okay. to look at your interests, start to look at uh, what you're doing today and what you're doing tomorrow. Uh, but as I say, like you need to look at uh, the clinical issues um, and as an OT, where do you go from there? Uh, yeah. what, what do you tackle? You need to be focused. Um, so attributes, you know, you need someone who is quite clinical and some people think, sometimes people think that in physical, that's where it's very, it's very direct. Someone has a fracture and they have poor range of motion and uh, it's easy to pick on those things. In mental health, you need to be like that. You need to be quite focused. Um, and then, you know, the resilience of uh, dealing with people's issues, uh, dealing with people yeah. who come to you and they tell you a lot of difficulties. Um, you need to be resilient. Um, sometimes I say to my colleagues, why don't you have people that I supervise here, the junior OTs that, um, mm -hmm. you know, you need a weird sense of humor uh, to, to be able to, to survive uh, the, you know, the, say the period that I've managed to survive myself. And we had a sense of humor where you laugh at your own problems and sort of take it in your stride when these big issues do come into play yeah. from service users. Uh, that kind of helps me a lot. You need to look at your own life as well. Um, do you socialize? Do you have a balanced lifestyle yourself? Um, it's needed. It, it's really needed in this area. Uh, okay. So, I mean, you know, as a human, as, as someone who is interested in, in mental health, um, you need to be, to have your own coping mechanisms. Uh, weird sense of humor is one of them. Uh, <laughs> I, I, see, life, I see your secret now. This, uh, this is your, your secret yeah. of success in, in mental does. health. A weird sense of humor. <laughs> yes, a weird sense of humor because we deal with a lot of people's um, personal issues. Uh, some of them quite deep, um, people's traumatic experiences um, that, you know, on the surface might not be quite visible. Yeah. Uh, it's not quite obvious. If someone, as I said to you, if someone is involved in a uh, road traffic accident, you know that they went through a traumatic event. Mm -hmm. uh, but the good thing is you can see it. They have a fractured leg. In mental health, uh, people go through trauma in their lives. Mm -hmm. but you don't have tangible evidence that is there mm -hmm. uh, unless if you dig deeper and um, do your own evaluations. So, but then when it's coming out of the surface, when people are starting to tell you, uh, it can hit you hard, uh, to be honest with you, it can, you know, when, when you, you evoke uh, people's uh, deeper um, traumatic experiences, you, you need to be able to deal with that. Yeah. Uh, not to scare anyone, uh, because it's not always like that. Just yeah. um, 
you, you need to be able to deal with those things. But if you're clinical, if you're focused, if you know what an OT does, if you know your boundaries, uh, and explain to the service users as well. I do explain a lot that as an OT, I'll be focused on uh, helping you to improve your functional independence. Mm-hmm. And a lot of stuff is coming up, you know, refer to other services, refer to a psychologist, and as an OT, look at um, independent living skills. That's what I'm going to be able to help you with. Um, right. Sometimes you are always holistic, but a reductionist point of view is needed sometimes. Okay, I see, I see. Okay, okay. Th- thank you so much for that.